those allegations were not necessary. And, you know, to be accused of having misled the public, of having lied to the public, of having jumped the gun, of being the complainant in the matter, and the judge and the jury to quote him verbatim. I found that really distasteful and far from the truth. The suggestion by the SAPS is that the NPA in a nutshell is driving some kind of an agenda against the national director, the deputy national director of public prosecutions. And I find that very strange. And that is why I, when I received a call from the National Commission of Police, um, and to be honest with you, I still do not know what was the reason for her to call me. I'm still battling to understand what is it that she wanted from me. Because all that she was saying is that uh, this summons was not issued properly. You see, I'm talking to you with confidence as a jurist and a person who received the summons. The summons appeared to me, and they still appear to me, as a an official document, a legal document, which was issued by the clerk of the court in Pretoria Magistrates Court. And what I found very strange is that is to receive a call about from the National Commissioner of Police and say and, and say, telling me that those people did not have the mandate to come and serve the summons to you. I'm sure you will agree with me that when they came to me to serve the summons, I could not pick up anywhere in the document itself that they did not have the requisite mandate. And I don't know, I must pause and say that I don't know which mandate was she referring to. Because the person who served the summons on me was a, a high-ranking official of the SAPS, a Lieutenant Colonel, for that matter, who also even asked me to make a copy of her identification card. But I said, I am satisfied that she is a police officer, and I cannot second guess her and the document that she was serving me. And for all intents and purposes, my role was to receive the summons for onward transmission or service to, to the deputy director consent. What is disheartening, at least for me, is to find myself in a situation and uh, where, where a perception is now being created that this was done for a particular agenda or particular reason by the NPA. I have said that I've spoken to the prosecutor who's dealing with the matter telephonically to get the details of this matter. If the prosecutor can come through the door, I won't even be in a position to recognize that this is the person uh, by the name of Advocate Ferreira. And any suggestion that I had anything to do with this matter is totally wrong and it's misleading. But 
what is more concerning for me is that, and I raise this with the National Commissioner as well, that this is not the first time that this is happening. The same prosecutor had told me that there was an instance where the very same investigating officer, Kennel Boats, came to obtain a warning statement from the very same deputy national director in another matter unrelated to this one. And after that, I am told that the the kennel butchers was then um, threatened with a being removed from the case. And it was reported that the docket was then subsequently demanded from the prosecutor. And I'm told that the investigations again in that matter were at an advanced stage. I say it's disheartening because what I have been advised is that it looks like the investigation is not going anywhere as we speak because nothing is happening. We haven't had anything. Again, why I raised this as a concern that it is repeating itself that when the police have come to serve a summons, then the National Commissioner and the head of brass all of a sudden come to the fore and say that those, those police, that police officer is not the investigating officer in the matter. Then um, I raise that as a, as a concern, and I'm raising it as a concern again. Why I'm raising it as a concern is that I even told him that we live in a constitutional democracy, guided by the Constitution, where we are all guaranteed in the Constitution that everyone is equal before the law. And then no perception should be created in the minds of the public that some people are treated differently when it comes to the matters, to criminal matters, or even prosecution. And I pause to say uh, that it reminds me of a, a well-known a book by a renowned author, George Orwell, who wrote The Animal Farm. And he said, <clears throat> and I quote, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. And I really don't want a situation where a perception can be created in the minds of the public that that is what is happening. The Constitution guarantees, as I've said, everyone the right to equality. And I am saying, if the Deputy National Director's rights has been trampled upon, she has the right to approach the court and challenge those who have trampled on her rights. That is guaranteed by the Constitution. But I want to assure you, members of the media, that everything that happened, it happened procedurally, 
and any suggestion that the NPA has a particular agenda in this matter is far from the truth and in fact it's ludicrous. You know, I, I read and I also saw the spokesperson of the SAPS going on and on and on, both in, in, in media, on TV, and also on, on print media, saying that today the SAPS are meeting with the NPA. You know, I would have come before you and told you that that is far from the truth. If I had not, if I did not take it upon myself this morning to verify that with the prosecutor who is dealing with the matter. And I have no knowledge, I do not have any knowledge of that meeting until I had to phone the prosecutor myself this morning before I came in here, where he told me that indeed he received a call from one general, I think Munu or Doye and Taiwe, and asked for a meeting, the details of which I don't know. And I don't know where that meeting is going to take place, but really I have not been invited. I'm not aware of that meeting. The last time that there was a proposal about the meeting was on the 24th when I received a call from the National Commissioner suggesting that we should meet and, and discuss this issue so that we don't drag our names in the mud. I said, well, I will. I gladly I'll avail myself for a meeting, provided she comes to the meeting. And um, I haven't heard, neither has my PA heard from her after she took her details, until I read it on the media that there is a meeting between the SAPS and the NPA. Therefore, the purpose of this meeting is really to put things into perspectives and to assure the public that NPA has done absolutely nothing wrong in this whole matter. <coughs> and as far as I'm concerned, <coughs> the summons that was served on me it's a legitimate document. And it's written silver ca Silverton Case 688 stroke 10 stroke 2014. And below it, it's, it's written Lieutenant Kennel Portis. Unfortunately, this document, once it is issued at court, I cannot think of any other means of withdrawing it unless perhaps my colleagues can, can ad advise me. Uh, I am not aware of any. I can only think that the only way to withdraw it is to make an application to court and make all these allegations that the spokesperson for the SAPS has been making. And I hereby invite him and anyone who claim that the NPA has any particular agenda to do that in a form of a son statement, in an affidavit, and will duly reply in an affidavit, so that people can bind themselves 
with what they are saying. We'll be glad to respond to that in a form of an affidavit. But for the benefit of the people of South Africa, especially those who do not understand the processes, the legal processes and the procedures followed in court. I want to say this and I, I want to stress it. The police receive a complaint. The police will then investigate the complaint and take the matter to the authority mandated to prosecute a complaint, which is the National Prosecuting Authority. It is then the prosecutor who will then read the docket and satisfy himself or herself with the contents of the docket. And if the prosecutor is of the view is satisfied that there is a prima facie case, the prosecutor will then enroll the matter in court. I am not aware of a situation except when I was still a young boy during the time of apartheid where the investigating officers would also be used as prosecutors. But what I'm saying is I'm not aware of a situation where the police can tell and instruct the prosecutor that now is the time that the, that the matter is now ready for you to enroll it. But it is the other way around. Therefore, any suggestion that the matter is not yet ready for it to be presented to the NPA when the prosecutor has satisfied himself that the matter is ready, really it's, it's misleading. And I'm sure all of you, you have seen matters in court, although I'm not condoning it, how many matters do we have in court that are enrolled and those matters get postponed time and again, over and again, for what? For further investigations. Therefore, any suggestion that the matter can only be enrolled once it is fully investigated is clearly misleading. Therefore, what I'm saying is, it is the responsibility of the prosecutor to make a decision whether the matter is ready to be prosecuted or not. But in this case scenario, I find this very strange because I was hoping that the police as our strategic partners will work with us in, in this matter when we tell them that we are ready to prosecute the matter. But what I find strange is that the police has now assumed the role of being the, the defense. The deputy national director knows her legal rights. And if this document was issued fraudulently, I'm sure not only myself expect that those who have done that should be prosecuted, should be charged and prosecuted. But then we'll see what's going to happen. I can only hope that after all this, because the impression that has been created is that these police were merely instructed by the prosecutor to
take the summons after the prosecutor had done, had done everything, issued it, and then called them and handed the summons to them to go and serve to the deputy. And I am saying here and now that if the conduct of the prosecutor is found to be wanting, which I strongly deny, he will have also to face the might of the law. And if the police officers, Colonel Bortes and, 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 and others, acted unlawfully, I expect also that stern actions be taken against them. But we will see if that's going to happen. Then, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have managed to explain the procedures, the processes and procedures, and that we at NPA really we do our our job faithfully and diligently without fear favor prejudice and also the public must always be must be rest assured that we handle cases even if they involve our 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 own we expect the same to everybody. And with those words, I think I have managed to clear this misunderstanding that has been happening for the past three days. By the way, I. I just felt that I should bring along also, this is the correspondence between the emails between the prosecutor who's dealing with the matter and the office of, of General Moon, where the prosecutor was raising concerns when he was told that the, the investigating officer Bortes was removed from the case, in fact, from both cases. And what I am reading here is that he was assured by the office of General Moon that Colonel Bortes is still a member of the, of the team, and only that uh, the General Tawie is supervising the team. Therefore, my understanding is that Bortes is the, is the, is the I.O. because he's part of the, of, the, of the investigating team. And really, I, I don't know where this thing come, is coming from, that he is not a, an investigating officer in the matter. And I think that it is very important that the people of South Africa know the truth, especially when the institution like the National Prosecuting Authority that they rely on is being attacked and its integrity is at stake because that will really, really, if it has not yet <coughs> destroyed the public confidence, which we are working very hard to restore here at NPA. It is for that reason that I felt it necessary as the head of this institution to address this issue, which I think this would be the last time that we hear about all these things. But I have all the evidence here. If the summons was issued unlawfully, then action will have to be taken against those who were responsible for that. But as far as I understand, the law, this is a legal document, and it, had to, it has to be honored. And if you want to challenge it, we have to go to court 
and challenge it. We have structures in place to do that. I thank you very much. Thank you, NTPP. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take this opportunity to um, take questions uh, in relation to the subject at hand. Are you able to say whether or not she will appear on the 21st of April to answer to the charges? And my second question is, you have mentioned, you've said it over and over, that the integrity of the NPA is under attack. And of course, you are concerned about the fact that this situation between yourselves and the SAPS has spilled out into the public. How do you see this situation being resolved going forward? Thank you. I think we should be taking one more question and take it before we turn uh, Good morning, Barry Bateman, Eyewitness News. Um, I've got two questions related to this matter. Firstly, on um, the uh, on the appearance of Jibai in court on the 21st of April, we understand, uh, first confirm, that summons is still valid. It's, it's still a, a, a genuine document. It stands as is. If the accused does not appear, will the NPA or the prosecutor in this matter pursue a warrant of arrest to haul that person before the court? Um, and secondly, on what authority, just so you can clarify my understanding of the law and for people, on what authority can an accused dictate to the powers that be which investigating officer she will cooperate with? My hand over to the NTPP to respond. Thank you. Just to address uh, you, Paramil. Uh, first question. Yes, I attempted to serve the summons upon her. But my understanding of the law is that that is one of the, uh, the that, that is one of the manners to effect service upon a person. Um, my understanding is of the law is that those the summons has been served upon her. She's aware. And if she doesn't appear in court, um, I have no doubt in my mind that the prosecutor will do what is necessary in the circumstances. And uh, then the court will then be the final arbiter if she doesn't appear. The court will have to make a ruling on that. Uh, but I'm sure that the prosecutor will really, because <clears throat> when she refused to accept the summons, I noted, I wrote in the summons what happened, and the witness who was there also witnessed and signed that she refused, but we, she nevertheless were, was told of the date and the venue um, when she's supposed to, to appear. Yes, the integrity of the NPA. I'm more concerned about it, especially because the public um, looks and expects the NPA to do its work without fear, favor, or prejudice as enjoined by the Constitution. I can assure you that we're trying our best we, I may concede because of all these things that are happening, uh, perhaps that we need to even work harder than we are doing. And my undertaking is that we'll strive to do that, despite all these challenges that we encounter along the way. But it is our <coughs> wish uh, that the integrity of the NPA remains intact and is not tarnished. 
Um, as I alluded to the call, to the workshop that we've recently had with all stakeholders, that was one that was but one of the of the of the issues that we're trying to to address, especially with a view to 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 regaining and to assuring the people of South Africa um, that we are doing our work without any in influence um, from anywhere. That is very important. Uh, what was the question? <coughs> from eyewitness news? <coughs> Okay. I think the, 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 the first question relates to <coughs> the fact that this is a valid legal document. And I have said that in my address, and that is how I also perceive it. I agree with you, it's a valid document. But I am not aware, and it cannot be, that the, 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 a person who is the subject of the investigation can choose who should be or dictate who should be his or her investigating officer. But in this case, I think I must also add that uh, even the police themselves, especially after a summons has been issued, which is a valid document, a court document, uh, calling upon a person to appear in court, the police cannot encourage that person not to appear in court. That is my, my answer. We have a question from CD Power FM. <laughs> Thanks. CD Power, Power FM. NDPP, where to next then for the relationship between the NPA and the police? You know, you spoke about the, meet, the workshop that happened. They spoke of a meeting, so you know nothing of. At the end of the day, though, Public confidence has a lot to do with how you guys work with each other. After a week of muttering and calling each other liars, where to next? And also, um, just in line with that, I, I, I just want you to go back a little bit with me, just to elaborate on why you put yourself in the middle with regards to the summons. They can't deliver it at the place of work. Why did you choose to not only receive it, but to also put a call out so quickly in the public, to put it out in the media that she's gone AWOL? Thanks. <coughs> The question is whether the NTPP has said that she has gone AWOL. Why did the you next so question is whether we, the relationship between the subs and the NPA yes, is it's what not is the, the next step from now. Happened, right? With Tegan Morris, there was a very similar issue where they were blaming each other. The NPA and the subs were blaming each other. It's happened again. So I just need to understand where to next because you have to work together. That's a given. And the other question, why did the NTP take it upon himself to issue a statement to, to, the to, to take the, summ the, the, the summons and also to public to go to the public and go, she's gone AWOL? Because as I understand it from reports, you then said to your communications team, it must be known that she's gone AWOL and the police are looking for her. And that's what kind of started all of this. NTP. <laughs> Thank you, Tzidi. Tzidi, my, 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 my short answer to your question is that you, you know we are dealing with a with the integrity of of the NPA and it is my view that when we do our business at NPA <laughs> we must do our business in a transparent manner the members of the public uh, are entitled to know what is happening. Because if this was not communicated to the members of the public, I'm sure you'll be asking me a different question today. You'll be asking me that we hear that your deputy was served with the summons. And were you keeping this a, a secret? and which does not look good. Remember that it starts with the leadership. The question of integrity it starts with the leadership and must cascade down to the, to the junior staff members. Um, if you ask me, in the past it happened. I'm sure you are not referring to the P 
period when I was not around. You were around Tegrin Morris last year. Ooh. Um the Tegrin the Recha Park case. That case didn't go through and the police blamed it on the NPA. And the NPA at the time was a different spokesperson, but the spokesperson was angry, saying the police bungled up, it's not us. That whole back and forth has happened before. Oh. In your time. No, no, I th I thought that you were saying why didn't why did I I, I, I communicate, why did we I'm, communicate it oh, no, so no, no, quickly? No, 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 that's not about the summons, it's about the friction, okay. the ongoing friction between SAPS and MPA. Okay, but I, 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 I think that question, I'm asking myself, the question we're asking, I have the same question to SAPS, and it's SAPS that can really answer that question, because you are referring to an instance where SAPS also went public accusing us. And it's a repetition again. All that we communicated is what had happened here at, at NPA that we received summons. That is not an attack to SAPS. We communicated what exactly happened. And what was the reaction? SAPS then came guns blazing and attacked us again. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you, you remind me of that incident that happened uh, with, 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 the, with the Tiger Morris case. But I'm sure when you get the opportunity, you will have to <coughs> ask them, why do they do that? Because there are ways and means of addressing these issues uh, responsibly. <coughs> Thank you. Sorry, one, one last question. Thank you. Uh, if you can just clarify for me, perhaps I misunderstood you in your statement, but you said something about the investigation is, 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 seems not to be going anywhere. If the investigation seems not to be going anywhere, then why would the summons, is it true then when the SAP say that the summons were issued prematurely? Can you just clarify that point for me, because perhaps I misunderstood what you mean. Let, 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 let me just respond quickly to that. Yeah. No, I agree with you, Pamela. You didn't understand me quickly, correctly. I was referring to another matter, the earlier matter where she was also involved. I said in an earlier matter where the deputy national director was also involved and the same investigating officer, Bortes, had come to obtain a warning statement from her. That's another, that's another matter. Thank you. I know too, please. Um, it's Patricia here from the SABC. Patricia Fosahi. Um, I just need clarity on one point. I want to find out who approached who? Did the NPA approach SUPS to take action against, um, or to rather investigate um, the charges against uh, Ajiba, or was it the other way around? Who, so who, who was approached by who? How it started. How did the start? How did the matter start? Who went to who? Because the S, according to the <coughs> SAPS, you approached them and you asked them to investigate. And now it seems like it's the other way around. Thank you, um, Ms. Fisach. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not um, downplaying your, your, your question, but I, I, I think when I, 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 I gave my address, I, I tried my best to make it clear that the process is that the complainant, that a complaint is <coughs> made to the police. And if you have a complaint against anyone, you'll go to the police. That is, the, the police are there to investigate complaints. Therefore, your question that who approaches who, all complaints are laid to the police. And my understanding in this case is not different than any other case. The complaint was laid with the police, and the police started investigating. In fact, they are saying they are not disputing that there is a docket that, they, that, that is opened, which they are investigating. But what they are saying is that the, in, the, the investigating of the, the, these persons who 
they allege that the detective colluded with the prosecutor um, without consultation with what they say the investigating officer in the matter to issue the summons. That is how I understand it. I don't have a mic, but I have a follow-up question. Okay. Okay, then, who laid the complaint? Let's go there. Can, we, can that be made public? Who exactly laid that original complaint? From who did it come from? Okay. You, you, you see, the fact of the matter is, and I have said this on radio, and I have, I'm saying it again now. One, I have, as I'm standing here, I've, ne I've not seen the docket myself. Not because it is this matter. I don't see any, even the, the docket you are referring about, uh, we are referring to earlier on the Tegra docket, I've never seen it. But all that I understand, and this is what you must understand, in all criminal matters, the complainant is the state. That is why when the accused appears in court, the case, you'll find that it's the state versus so-and-so. But really, if you expect me to tell me who went to the police station and made an initial complaint, I don't know. I haven't seen the docket. Hi, Barry Bateman again. On, on a question related to Colonel Boats Boerter, um, he's being painted by police management as a rogue police officer here, which is a very serious allegation being made against a very uh, a senior police officer. Uh, given this allegation that the police are making against this particular person, are you satisfied that your prosecutor, the advocate Ferreira, has then made a decision on good information? So are you, are you satisfied with Buerta's bona fides in this particular matter, that he was acting on a, a proper mandate? So that's the one point. I just want clarity on that. I think you've touched on it. Um, and then the other, the allegation of AWOL against a, a deputy national director is a very serious allegation in itself. Um, for somebody of that stature, I think it's you know, conduct unbecoming. What steps are being going to be taken there from an internal perspective against a senior official in the NPA that just doesn't turn up for work for two days? Thank you. I must confess that I have not seen uh, that he has been branded as a, a rogue police officer. I'm taken aback, in fact. Um, but I will then challenge the SAPS <coughs> to, by posing a question, what are they doing about that so-called rogue police officer? Why do they have a rogue police officer um, in their ranks? And if you listened to me earlier on, <coughs> referring to the emails that were exchanged between the prosecutor and the office of General Munu, when the prosecutor was questioning why was he removed from the case, well, I would say my, the opportunity presented itself even at that stage. To say, to, to say, they had all the opportunity to say, we've removed him because he's a rogue police officer. And uh, his integrity is tainted. But what did they say? They say, no, he's not removed. He's still part of the, of the investigation team. Therefore, I can't stand here and speak <coughs> on behalf of the police. But really, that is very interesting to say that you have a, a rogue police officer and you know about it. And if I know of any rogue prosecutor here at NPA, I can tell you now that I will deal with that rogue, with that rogue, rogue official at NPA. I don't know what they are doing about it. Um, what was the next question? Uh, the issue of AWOL of a senior official. Okay. You know the issue of AWOL? <laughs> I don't want to accuse you, uh, members of the media, 
All that we reported, you've got our media statement that, uh, that we released, <laughs> which is clear. It says, well, it depends on the, on the, uh, on the question of semantics. Perhaps you speak English uh, more than we speak. And you know it better than us. I, I won't question that. It's a, it's, it's a question of how you put it. Um, because we said that uh, the police came looking for her and she was not at work. And I had earlier on tried to call her uh, in an unrelated matter to discuss with her. And what, what did you decide to write? You said, Deputy National Director is AWOL. Then I think you have to answer that question. But it didn't emanate from us that she's AWOL. But if AWOL means she's nowhere to be found, I, I don't. I don't know. Then I, I don't. Is, is that the? <coughs> is that the meaning? Yeah. Okay. She didn't apply for leave. Perhaps she absent without leave. Absent without leave. Or absent without leave. Mm -hmm. oh, absent without leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, 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 that is that is what we, that is what we said. That she was yeah. not at work, uh, which I can confirm now, that she was not at work, and um, well, yesterday I met her and she uh, gave me the 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 sick leave, the sick note that she, she fell sick and she had to rush to the doctor. Um, one final question, sorry, NDPP. Um, I just want to ask you, you mentioned the fact that the police commissioner interfered in, in your um, investigation. Does that not amount to defeating the ends of justice or obstruction? And if so, what action or remedy is required to deal with that issue? Well, uh, you see, I, I wouldn't venture into uh, saying that <coughs> what the National Commissioner is doing because of my position and, 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 and go out public and say she's defeating the ends of justice. But all that I'm saying is I'm concerned about about her in involvement in the matter the concern is purely based on this in, on this premise i asked her and i'm asking the same question does she really do this to <coughs> all other matters where other ordinary suspects are involved that is my concern. And I have earlier on referred to the Constitution equality before the law, especially when the people who are expected to uphold the rule of law, that we are not creating a perception in the minds of the people that this, you call it the way you like it, whether it's interference or intervention, whether really they are not calculated to this, this intervention is not calculated to, 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 to mean interference, because I really don't understand. Why I say that? If you want to challenge a legal document, the procedure is that you go to court. And there can be no shortcuts. <laughs> and myself and the National Commission of Police can do nothing about this. It's the person against whom a summons has been issued who must go to court. And if she feels, the National Commission, if she, if she feels strongly about it, that something wrong had happened, as, uh, as I've, been, I've been told now that uh, uh, they, 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 they call the, 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 this I.O. A, a, a rogue investigating officer. They must do something. They must put that up, up, apply to court, and expose him that he's a rogue. They must put up, make an application, put up in an affidavit, so that he'll also be given the opportunity to, to respond to those allegations. They, they, that will be fair for me. On that note, sorry, the, 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 do it's you another follow-up. Do you believe that Jiba is being protected by Ria Pierre or by another higher. or somebody higher up? Yeah. 
You see, I, 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 I wouldn't want to say that I believe <coughs> that she's protected. <coughs> but I want to say that a perception <coughs> is created and it's unavoidable that she is being protected at all costs. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I pause for more questions. Thank you very much. We thank you for attending. There is a request on TPP um, for you to communicate, to summarize this in Zulu for about two minutes. Uma Busagwa Zulu Zulu Bap. Oh, Africans. NTPP? Why not? Why not? We'll do it one on one. Yeah, sure. We'll do it one on one. They'll do it and then we'll do it together. We can use you. That's fine. One minute. They got it, yeah. Thank you, Pakamila. Thank you for pushing that.